Good morning, yes, and it is a very good morning here at the crossing so far. Right off the bat, we've got some giraffe. This is the Maasai giraffe, not the common giraffe that you'd most likely see at Juma with Tristan and, um, and Taro this morning. Um, these are the Maasai giraffe and only occur in this particular area. Slightly smaller than the common giraffe um, that you find down in South Africa, but they do occur in larger herds and they've got a much... I don't know, a much more irregular pattern on their coats as well. Much sort of sharper edges. They don't have the blurred edges that you'd find. And then also, the males are not as big. Here's a big male there. And they are busy watching another giraffe on the other side of the river. Let me show you there. These are all males, young males, and that's why they're having the reaction that they are having. Let's see what this other giraffe is busy doing. Over here. For those of you who um, don't know me, my name is Steph Winterboer. And um, oh, there was a giraffe there, but there is no more. Looks like he's moved on. Let's go back to our bachelor herd over here. They've obviously come down to the river for a bit of a drink. The chances of them crossing are fairly small, though. Tally ho, four legged, 16 headed, well, sorry, four headed, 16 legged giraffe. It looks like that, hey. That is that, that very, that, that is uh, uh, how their camouflage works. And in a nutshell, that's how, how zebra camouflage works, that's how leopard camouflage works. What it is, it breaks up the outline, it breaks up the profile of the animal, and that is a very important thing. Giraffe can and do become invisible, and what you're having a look at there on that skin pattern is the irregular light and dark and funny shaped patterns on their coats absolutely making the edges blurred. This guy is having a look at the camera. I'm not quite sure if he's seeing the camera or if he's seeing something else. I'll be honest with you, these cameras are very well hidden and almost silent. Let's have a look here what's going on there. It gives us a brilliant view of that almost dragon-like neck of a giraffe. Isn't that just fantastic? Now, Rebecca, you wanted to know if crocs ever try and eat giraffe. Um, Rebecca, not that I've seen. I mean, I've never seen a giraffe cross a river, to be quite honest. I don't know if this giraffe is going to attempt crossing a river. They must cross rivers. Um, a river like this, with its rocky bottom and holes in it, I mean, if a giraffe or a wildebeest can't even find footing here, can you imagine what it's going to be like for a giraffe to cross? I would imagine difficult. They can swim. They do cross bodies of water. I've never seen it before. And if we are going to witness something like that now, it's going to, there's that other giraffe. He's come out of the woodwork now. Other side of the river. I mean, this is dangerous territory for this giraffe, to be quite honest with you, because of the irregular footing. If he slips and falls, the chance of him getting a bit of whiplash and bashing his head onto a rock is very high, and he can do himself a lot of damage that way. Um, they don't have the muscle structures in their necks capable of withstanding sudden and violent movements of the head. And so falling for them is a very big problem. Right, we're going to carry on looking at this giraffe. If they cross here, we'll call you back straight away, of course. And um, you're going to send you over to Tristan, who's got some out-of-season rain.